Hello everybody and welcome! For those of you who know me, welcome back and for those of you who don't, I'm Pia and I'm your host for all things Lux. On today's video, I thought we'd discuss mid-luxury good quality handbags for this upcoming fall, particularly the models I would like to add to my collection. I have a couple of guidelines or perhaps questions that I tend to ask myself when it comes to buying luxury or just shopping altogether. I'll ask myself, do I want it because it's trending or because I actually like it, particularly when it comes to bags because I have a handbag obsession. <laughs> if a luxury bag that I want to purchase is currently trending, I'll keep that bag on my wish list for months, sometimes even for years, before I take the plunge because A, I don't want to get something that after a trend has passed, I'm not fond of or don't want anymore. The second reason for that is that for the time being, I don't have a money making tree in the backyard, so I do have to save up for these things. <laughs> Particularly if the bag is on the expensive end of things, I like my bags to be pieces that become permanent in my collection. So I'll usually get them after the initial fad of the trend has gone by, it's passed, and that way I can be sure that my want in the bag is related to the actual bag and not to the fact that I'm seeing it everywhere, I'm bombarded with its pictures, with it being looking cool, trendy, all that jazz, and it's a genuine interest that I have for the piece. Alternatively, if I want to impulse purchase a piece, I'll ask myself what is the resale value of this piece? Like it was the case when getting a mini Kelly. It was an impulse purchase, but I knew that the resale value for it would appreciate and if I didn't end up liking it, I could easily resell it. I like to be smart with my purchases and I do look at some of them as investment pieces and other ones as pieces that I simply like, I find beautiful and I want to cherish for a long time, regardless of its resale value. Case in point, my tiny long champagne bag. The last thing I like to do is to take advantage of particular occasions, like when a friend is getting married, as an opportunity to perhaps purchase something that was not currently on my wish list, but perhaps I need something for the occasion that can be a shawl, a special type of shoe, a special type of dress. But also I try to pay attention at this piece being something that I can easily and seamlessly blend into my everyday, kind of as an unexpected gift to myself. <laughs> All right, let's talk about handbags because honestly, I'm so excited for fall. I've even pimped up my phones and I'm already dressing in the fall colors, even if this is a summer dress and we're still pretty much in high summer. We have probably still a good month, month and a half to go here in France in this type of summery weather. So I want to make the most of it, but I'm also starting to embrace the upcoming season. But seriously, how cute do these two look? I'm obsessed. They look like a child's phone, but... I don't care, I love them. The first one right here will be the Demelier New York Midi in the croc black leather version. I've had this model for a couple of years on my wish list by now, and most recently the croc version of it, which reminds me of my grandma. Oh my goodness, I love it. I can imagine so many looks with it. And I'm honestly looking very forward to adding this one to my collection. I think it will come in super handy on work days when I need to fit my laptop in it and my editing equipment for days when I have to take the train and go down to Paris to some meetings or day events and still look put together and nice, chic and elevated walking into this event with my workwear bag. I think a piece like this one will be ideal for those kind of scenarios, which normally take place around once or twice a week. So I think I would get quite a lot of wear out of it. There's something about shiny croc leather or simply embossed leather that I find particularly elegant and refined. It adds that extra touch of old Hollywood glamour to an outfit. And like I said before, it reminds me of my grandma. To me, she will always be one of my main favorite style icons. And I would really like to incorporate a little bit more croco into my everyday wear as well. I think styled with a wool coat, wool trousers for that kind of nonchalant at home autumnal outfit. And then with dressier, perhaps workwear type of outfits, it can also marry itself very nicely. All right, up next in my list, we've got the Sir bucket bag. Most of my bags are either tote bags or bucket bags. Even if they're not the safest bag, to carry around. It's always the type of models that I tend to gravitate towards because of the easy accessibility that they provide. I think this particular model has a little bit of an equestrian touch to it. The way the leather's been treated and the details on it give it that little bit of a countryside city chic vibe. And it looks like the more sleek structured version of some other slouchy, more relaxed vibe bucket bags that I already own. I also love the fact that there's a touch of warm brown, almost cognac leather 
leather interior. I think that softens the black exterior and it adds a certain type of roundness and warmness into the bag. The model also seems great as a stylish workwear bag that can easily transition into the weekend for a more relaxed vibe, which in turn makes it a pretty versatile model altogether. Up next, we've got the t -Lock model by Totem. This bag has been on my wish list for, I believe, two years perhaps now. It hasn't particularly been trendy or had a moment or anything like that. The reason I haven't cracked on it just yet was because they only did it with silver hardware. All the leather combinations that they did were always with silver hardware except for the black one. I'm a gold hardware girly. I do have a couple of pieces with silver hardware, particularly for evening wear. But for the most part, I'll always gravitate towards gold hardware in my accessories. Now they've made it in gold and for a limited time in the croc version. To me, this is a bag that offers an elegant touch to a look as well as versatility. It features a detachable strap for a seamless transition between clutch and shoulder type of wearing. And its slick design is now complemented by the gold tone hardware which is always a plus for me and it makes me think I'm running out of excuses not to get this bag. I think the size also makes it perfect for wearing it just as much during the day as during the evening in up to semi-formal occasions, I would say. Altogether, a beautiful one. I'm just gonna have to pick which one of all of these I'm getting for the next season. Perhaps we can do two. Up next, we've got the Dragon Diffusion Rosanna handbag. I feel like I'm so late to this party. Dragon Diffusion came in pretty recently under my radar perhaps only a couple of months ago. Their whole ethos is built around naturally made bags, always in leather, everything is hand woven, and the dyes used on the leather are all natural ones, which is always a plus as well. With this Rosanna model, there is some cute rawness to it that I find particularly appealing. Also has a tiny bit of a 90s touch, and being a 90s kid, this somehow speaks to me. Whether that's in the black, the dark brown, the camel, or the ivory, I think it would make for a very pretty weekend bag or evening bag. It also looks like it wouldn't take much space when it comes to packing and you know me, I'm always thinking about the next trip. Pricing for this brand is between the 300 and 500 euro mark more or less, which for the product offered, it does seem quite competitive. So I'm honestly very eager and curious about trying this brand. Up next, we've got this one right here. It's a handbag by Oleada. I discovered this handbags brand earlier this year and I have completely fell in love with it. I have this particular model in another color combination that's a little bit more summery. I think it's such an elevated chic piece. And generally speaking, I'm a very big fan of dark denim and dark brown together. It's something I normally tend to gravitate toward when it comes to picking up my wardrobe options. And I love seeing this combo in a handbag now. I can already imagine it with a big buttery soft leather brown jacket, dark denim trousers, and perhaps a pair of like stiletto heel brown boots with a tiny bit of an ivory roll neck. What do you think? chef's kiss. Up next, we've got the Leslie tote bag in suede by the brand Flattered. I think this one right here is a great alternative to the Rose Margot pan bag. Good quality without the price tag of the Margot bag, of course. It's got a very nonchalant style to it. Deep chocolate brown suede screams autumn. And I'm a big fan of suede leather bags. This one is crafted in Italy. It comes with an inner zip compartment for extra organization purposes. And even if the hardware in it is silver, it is still very minimal milk hardware. The main focal point on the bag are the straight north to south seams running down the front center of the handbag, which give a very Scandi vibe touch to it, if you ask me. All right, two more brands to go. The first one will be Manu Atelier, which is a brand I recently came across with. And the model I particularly liked from them is on the same realm as the one from Flattered. It's called the Tote du Jour and it's in deep brown. I particularly like it in the larger size. Once again, it's got a bit of that non talent bucket bag vibe to it. Something I see myself wearing as much for work meetings as I see myself wearing during the weekend with denim and a tee. I love the thin strap down the front that adds an extra feminine touch to it. And I think that it's an elegant leather model that whether we look at it today or in 10 years down the line, it will still be a pertinent piece in anyone's collection. They also offer it in a smaller version and in some other colors too. But obviously the deep brown with reddish under 
lighter tones was the one I had to choose. And now last but definitely not least, I wanted to mention the Massimo Dutti handbags offer in general this season. I personally wouldn't call handbags at this price point and made of leather the high street. Even if Massimo Dutti is owned and produced by the same owners as Sarah and Mango, I feel like Massimo Dutti always manages to deliver a higher quality in their products as well as a lovely in-store experience. So to me, they've always been the OG Midlux brand. They have a couple of models to choose from, whether you're looking for something in leather, something braided or in that kind of woven leather. They have a lovely selection of suede bags as well. And I feel like there's just something for everyone. Out of all the ones I mentioned today, they are by far the most affordable ones. And I might note without necessarily having to compromise on the looks. All right, you guys, that will be it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're not done, I'll leave you two more in here so you can binge a little bit more. See you next Sunday. Bye.